Welcome to a video log right after the one I just did, uh, rambling on about new games and my birthday and stuff. And this one is be rambling on about. There's a lot of stuff I've actually wanted to talk about that I haven't really gotten around to. Like uh, I don't know. I've been in kind of very like theoretical mindset, very philosophical mindset recently, and I've been having all these like weird thoughts and then weird conversations with my friends. They just kind of haven't spilled over into my my vlogs yet. I'm sure sooner or later they will. Maybe now. But before that I just want to finish the thought to have my last vlog that my presentation went over very well. Um, my professor was, like I said, absolutely blown away by what I had done and uh, the class really enjoyed it and uh, they really enjoyed it and uh, after after er every, everyone has to do a presentation and after every presentation we have a discussion and there's been some really interesting presentations in that class like stuff on like Cyprus and, and radical Islam and, and lots of uh, just really interesting topics uh, they, they, uh, I, I just got into that, that class because I got some fond memories of my, of inter my international relations class is the one I'm talking about. Uh, there was one presentation uh, these two girls did and it was a very, um, uh, their whole point of their, their presentation is there's two sides to every argument, every argument has two sides and generally speaking uh, media, especially the American media that they, they portrayed only, only gives you one side of this argument and only has a very one-sided viewpoint and it completely ignores the other side. And uh, they went over uh, the three major issues and they, they gave the two sides of the arguments for um, the bombing of, of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the uh, war in Iraq and war in Afghanistan. And then afterwards we have these um, uh, the, these debates in the class. Everyone comes together and asks questions of the presentation and, and they talk about stuff they didn't agree with and so on and so forth. And uh, in this class, in this presentation, uh, the girl up there totally, like, destroyed, um, like, every uh, American uh, position in, the, in those three, uh, three categories. And she was especially very harsh and very negative on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, saying they were not uh, necessary at all, which I totally 100% agree with, that they were not necessary. And then there was one guy in the class that he was trying to argue with them to say that you no, know, it was it was necessary. And then the Japanese would have uh, fought to the death and so on and so forth, even though the Japanese were begging for surrender. And then um, the girl just pulls out this argument that uh, everyone who worked on the uh, on the bomb and ordered the bomb to drop, like uh, Einstein, who you know worked on the bomb, and all the scientists, and then Eisenhower, who ordered. Uh, the one about a bomb to be dropped, later spoke out against it and said that it wasn't necessary and all the Allied higher-ups said that it wasn't necessary to do this to the Japanese. And the guy was just destroyed. He was just like, he didn't have anything to, to counter that. He kind of sat there like like sputtering for a little bit and, and just went quiet. It was it was pretty beautiful. I, I high-fived her after class. But um, uh, moving on uh, to my presentation, I actually thought there would be a lot more people who would try and argue with me, uh, but considering uh, the, the classes generally, it's it's pretty left wing. This is a, this is a college class, but it, it was pretty left wing, and uh, there was only one guy who, um, who who tried to argue with me, and usually he doesn't say that much, which I was I was kind of surprised. And he's a, he's a pretty intelligent guy. I really liked his presentation that was before, it was just before mine, which was on religion in international politics. And it was really quite interesting. And he said that um, we can't just go about faith 
like unquestionably, unquestioningly, like um, he he brought up an example that uh, President Bush said that he trusted uh, Vladimir Putin just because they shared the same faith, and that was it. There was no questioning about it. You just can you can just say this is my faith, and people don't question about it. He said, no, that's wrong. We need to question it. We need to. Uh, a couple of reasons, you know, why this exists. It's not just, it just doesn't arbitrarily exist, which I thought was really interesting and something that I quite uh, agreed with. But anyway, um, I'm rambling now, but this guy was the only guy in the class to actually uh, actively speak out against me and, and you know, uh, bring up some arguments and, and so on and so forth. And, and me and him had our, our, our parlay of words. But there's this, this old guy in the back. This He's 50 years old. And I'm pretty sure he hates everything. Like he just every everyone who comes up, he always argues them to like the bitter end and has these like epic arguments with them. Like every single presentation, you find something about it that he just like hates and then and then argues about. So I was currently operating under the theory that the man just absolutely hated everything. But turns out he's like the biggest Fidel Castro supporter in the world. Like, he just thinks he's a, a brilliant tactician and a brilliant political leader and genius. Like, basically he hates everything except Fidel Castro, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, he, pretty, he came, uh, during our argument, he totally backed my side and me and him kind of tag team this one guy and just uh, destroyed him in the classroom. And it was pretty epic. Like, uh, I totally wasn't, wasn't seeing that from him. I expected him to, like, stand up and give me a big uh, tirade about how, um, you know, this happened, this happened, and this happened, and so on and so forth. But he was <laughs> actually took my side, which, which kind of uh, floored me a little bit. But uh, I guess that's it for, for international relations. Uh, I, there was thing, uh, something that came up when me and my friend were talking after after psychology class we were talking with each other and I was telling him about my YouTube channel he's in he's yeah, he, we're both psychology majors and we were talking about the psychology of trolls and it was quite an interesting and philosophical conversation I have to say and uh, I've got a very different method with dealing with my trolls than say uh, Prince of Macedon has with dealing with his uh, I, I'll give you a little Basically, with my trolls, I either ignore them or block them instantly. Because I am, generally speaking, I'm a very resilient person. It's very hard to stress me out. It's very hard to get me worried about anything. And it's very hard to antagonize me. Like, I, I, I have these, uh, I, I see like a, a negative comment and I, I react in my head a little bit, react with anxiousness, with with anger, and so on and so forth, and I have those thoughts and I just kind of let them go, and then ignore it and go back to whatever it was I was doing that was far more important than arguing with some um, person on the internet who's only projecting their personal issues onto me. And then uh, just kind of let them go or ignore them. Or I have another strategy, and that is to just give them a nonsensical answer back, just to confuse them. Because it, of all the thoughts and all the emotions you can make your opponents feel, uh, confusion I think is the best one. And I'll tell you why, this actually came from my friend Ash, and that guy, he spews out a lot of shit, but uh, there's one thing he said that definitely rang true with me, and that is, um, when people, when you confuse people, you make them feel like an idiot, like, uh, they, 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 just say something that confuses them, they'll be like, what, what, why did he say that? And then they'll start bashing their two brain cells together to be, come on brain, work, work, why did he say this? I don't understand, it doesn't make any sense, come on brain, come up with an answer, and then just keep bashing two rocks together in their brain until, until they, they come up with nothing, and then, then just decide that, you know, that it's either not worth their time, or, or apparently that I'm an idiot because they don't understand me. Something along those lines, but I, that, that's one of my, uh, ways to, of dealing with, with trolls, whereas the Prince of Macedon is a, he's an incredibly neurotic person. He's got to be one of the most neurotic people I've ever met, and he takes everything you say to him very personally, and he, he like takes it to heart, and then has these big epic long arguments, like I had the one vlog about me and him, and he had this big epic long argument with this one dude that went on for like three hours, 
and just this huge like essays written on both sides. I'm like, dude, you gotta let this go. You've got better things to do. You're you're wasting your time with this. You know, he's just you're just playing his game. You're just he's just pulling the leash and you're coming along with him. It's just a waste of your time. And then I think he stopped after that. But um, that's how just speaking most people deal with trolls. But uh, it's quite an interesting conversation we had. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time again. And I'd like to move on to other things besides vlogs. So I'm going to cut this off here. But if you'd like to hear, I've been having lots of philosophical conversations with people and thoughts in my head. So if you'd like to hear some more, more just random abstract ideas like on economics and politics and quantum physics and all kinds of crap I've been thinking and talking about, uh, leave a comment and I'll, I'll get around to it. But this is Joseph. He's